Hello and welcome to the Tenzig Manager Remote Management Best Practices video. My name is Ed Richardson. I'm the head of technical services for Tenzig US. Today we're going to talk about securing your remotely connected Tenzig Thin and Zero clients. First of all, what is the Tenzig Manager? The Tenzig Manager is our enterprise grade management application, which is available free of charge with your Tenzig Thin or Zero client. The Tenzig Manager gives you the ability to configure control and remote access all of your Tenzig clients from one convenient console. In our last video entitled Tenzig Manager Cloud Connector Setup for External Device Management, my colleague Dan Schwadron detailed the installation of the Tenzig Manager in both a single and dual server configuration. I would highly recommend watching that video for installation and configuration tips. For this video, we're going to talk about configuration and security. For securing the Tenzig Manager, the first thing we want to take a look at is the port requirements. For your cloud-connected devices from external to your network, those devices are going to connect across the Cloud Connector port. Inside of our Cloud Manager Settings tool, by default, that port is set to 443. You have, however, the ability to change that port either within the Cloud Manager Settings tool or within the installation process itself to be whatever port you choose to use. For the internal port management, and this is the ports that will speak from the internal Tenzig Manager server out to your Cloud Connector server if you're using a dual server configuration, you have the ability to configure your ports in two different ways. One of the new features of the manager is what's called on-demand port allocation, or ODP for short. This gives you the ability to choose the starting port number that you want to utilize within the manager, how many ports you want to utilize, and how long you want to keep those ports active. This gives you the ability to manage the port utilization of the overall product and allows you better to be able to lock the firewall down so that only the ports that are required for the Tenzig manager to function are actually in use. In a single server configuration, however, the only port that you need to worry about is that initial cloud connector port. That's the only one that the device is going to talk to from outside of the network. This port is going to be either NATed or pushed through a firewall rule from the external public facing internet to the interface of your Tenzig manager server. And this is how those machines are going to connect in order to be managed and remote accessed. The configuration on port 443 is WebSocket based and encrypted. It uses the certificate that you installed along with the Tenzig manager in order to encrypt that communication. It also provides for an always on communication style rather than a check-in communication type. This gives you better response time and better ability to manage your Tenzig endpoints. Now the certificate that I was talking about is this one right here. When you installed your Tenzig manager, you were asked either to generate a self-signed certificate or were given the opportunity to use your own certificate within the manager. This is the cert that's used in order to secure your cloud connector configuration. You also have the ability to install this certificate onto your endpoints themselves so that the endpoint will only connect to the Tenzig manager that has the appropriate certificate. Again, we can set your port number for your cloud connector here in the connector setup panel. You also have the ability to view your certificates properties here in the panel so that you can see things like what its uh, certificate type and expiration date are. The role administration tool is how we configure the, the Tenzing Manager to be managed by an administrative team. Because the Tenzing Manager is Active Directory integrated, you have the opportunity to add in your Active Directory groups or users 
as users inside of the Tenzig Manager. By clicking the plus sign, you can go in and you can look for a particular group or user in order to add them into the manager. For this example, we'll use our US support group and we'll add them in as allowed managers. Now this is going to allow anyone who is a member of the support US group to log into the manager and to manage the clients that are inside of it. We use an ACL based management style which means that you can give or take away granular permissions on a one-to-one -one basis. Within the RBAC tool, you can either give an entire section of permissions, you can give part of a section of permissions, which is annotated by the black dot, or you can take away that section of permissions entirely. You can do this at a granular level in order to affect exactly the permission set that your technical users should have. When you're done creating that set of permissions, you simply click the Save Changes button to commit those into the database. Once this has been done, the users log in. The only opportunity they'll have to manage is based on the permissions that you've provided to them. Anything not checked is of course grayed out and unavailable. Now for a local user, you also have the ability to add in individual people into one of the pre-configured groups that we created in the Tenzig Manager. We have an administrators group and we have a technicians group. By clicking the arrow, you have the opportunity to add a user into one of those groups. So I can take my user here, I can add him into this administrator's account, and all I have to do is refresh my permission set, and now my new administrator is available and of course has all of the permissions allocated to the administrator's group. The same process works with the technician's group, which of course is a limited permission set. And as you can see here, there are different sections of the permissions that are missing for that user. This can be done with any number of Active Directory groups or users or any combination of both in order to affect exactly the permission sets for exactly the users that you need to be able to manage your endpoints. You even have the option of a view only user. When you create a new ACL, the only populated section is this general section up here. This means that that user can log in and they can see everything, but they can't change a thing. This is useful for people who need to be able to observe or to be able to train, maybe see the environment and how it's acting, but someone that you don't necessarily want to be able to change any of the things inside of it. When you're done with your role administration tool, all you have to do is click the X in order to close the box. Now next I want to talk a little bit about how we segregate our clients. By default all of your endpoints are going to end up in the Thin Clients group here. And you can see in this particular installation we have a little over 4,000 units in here. It's a very unwieldy number, difficult to manage, and certainly difficult to secure. The group configurations beneath the Thin Clients group give us the opportunity to use different filtering regimens in order to be able to put the machines into logical groups and into secured groups more importantly so that we can affect exactly the configuration and the attributes to those units that we want them to have without again allowing anyone who shouldn't be in there to be able to get in. Now we're taking a look at our group here. This particular one is a Mac filtered group, hence the name Mac filtered. It's using the platform filter to tell us that these are our Linux-based Thin and Zero clients. And then as a companion, it's using the MAC address filter. You can stack any number of individual MAC addresses, and you can also use wildcards so that you don't have to type the entire MAC address every time. You can see here we have a few different addresses in this particular group. Any of the machines that conform to these MAC addresses will be able to become members of this group. 
no other machines outside of those MAC addresses are capable of becoming members. We also have another method for securing machines. Because IP-based filtering may not necessarily be the best bet for you if you have external users, as all of their IP addresses are going to be different, we still want you to be able to logically group and segregate your Tenzig endpoints. In order to accomplish this, what you can do is use registration codes. The registration code is available in the configuration GUI for the cloud connector on each Tenzig Thin and Zero client. Inside of there, you can create a customized name that you want to be attached to the particular group that these machines are going to show up in. In this example, we're using Lab1 as our registration code. This will create a scenario where only machines who have Lab1 as their registration code, regardless of what their IP address, their MAC address, their machine name, or any other attribute happens to be, anything that has Lab1 as its registration code will show up in this logical group. If we want to take a look at this from the endpoint perspective, we can VNC into this unit here. And when we go into our Cloud Manager applet, we can see that it's connected to our Cloud Manager. It's showing up on our Tenzig Manager. And if we go into the registration section here, here is our Lab1 registration code. Now this is how it works in Linux. In Windows, it's only slightly different. If we go to our Windows device and we log into that one, we can see here that if we go into the Cloud Agent Settings section, we also have a registration code section here. So we can use this either in Windows or in Linux to affect that same level of control over our endpoints. Another method that we can use is, again, the old-fashioned IP filtering. If we go into our platform filter again, NOS, Linux, and Zero Clients, and then our IP address filtering, we can choose any single C we can choose any portion of a single Class C network or any supernet that we want to in order to tell it what machines to put in here. If you have a predetermined network at your remote site, you can use this filter to very quickly and easily create that filtering regimen in order to put those machines into the logical segregation. Now, what can we do with these after we put them into these groups? I mean, it's really nice to be able to segregate everything and put them into nice, neat groups, but what purpose do we get out of this? The answer to that lies in our Client Configuration tab, and this is really why all of the security becomes such a big deal. In the Client Configuration tab, this is how we provision our endpoints. Once they've connected into your Tenzig Manager server, we now have the opportunity to do three things to those endpoints. Number one is we can automatically configure the endpoints using a predetermined configuration template. I've added one into this example so that you can see what it looks like, but the process is as simple as clicking the Add Template button and then choosing the template that you want to add into the group. What this will allow you to do is to automatically configure in an identical way each successive endpoint as it logs into the Tenzig Manager and is placed into that group. This template is group specific, so only the units within this particular group will receive that configuration. You do, however, have the option of using the same configuration template in multiple groups if you choose to. That's always an option. Or you can use unique templates to each group. The second thing that you can do is to enforce a specific firmware version on your endpoints based on their group membership. This gives you a good po potential for being able to automatically update any aged clients that might be out there because the next time they log into the manager and they become members of this group, the Tenzig manager will automatically look at their firmware version and will bring them up to the required firmware level. 
The third option that you have is to automatically name your clients. You can create a naming convention and going back with our uh, lab one registration code, I can do a lab one and then a three digit number in order to begin naming those units automatically as they become members of this group in lab one dash zero zero one zero zero two zero zero three etc. This gives you the ability to control the configuration of all of your clients from within the group that you now have securely put them into. Again because the requirements for these groups are very specific you can ensure that you have no unauthorized clients in the groups as well as being able to use the certificate to ensure that your externally connected clients do not connect to any managers other than the one that you have configured for them. Now the manager console in and of itself. The console that you see here, this is our MMC based console. It's built on Microsoft's management framework. Your technical staff can use this console installed onto the server as we are here by remoting into it. They also, however, have the option of installing this server locally to themselves wherever they happen to be at and they can remotely access the server using the console. When they attempt to launch the console remotely, all of the same requirements exist for logging into it, group membership, role-based access control, all of this stuff is still relevant to the remotely connected consoles, just like it is if the user was logging into the server. This way there's no way to circumvent that security that you've configured. This allows for your users to be able to easily and in a very fluid interface manage all of your Tenzig clients whether they are home based, whether they're in a remote site or whether they happen to be working out of the office itself. The other option that you have the ability to provide to your technical staff is the ability to use the web console. Now this is an HTML5 coded web interface that gives a replicated view of the Tenzig Manager just like the MMC based console does. It is however much more lightweight and if you choose to can be accessed through the same cloud connector connection that your endpoints are using to connect through. This again will give your staff the ability to manage, to remote access, to remote control all of your client interface They can make changes to configurations and it gives them the overall manageability that you need regardless of where that technician might happen to be at. This concludes our Tenzig Manager Remote Management Best Practices video. Thank you for your time and please watch our other videos on Tenzig.com.